Okay, thank you very much. Will you show the visitors how we behave? <laughs> In school now, yes. No. A welcome to everybody, and especially to the gentlemen who've come along to try us out tonight and see uh, how much they enjoy it. And they might come back. The trouble is that they know the the speaker that we've managed to organise from to tell us something about the history of our Fridland Golf Club, Mr Ted Lloyd. So uh, I don't know if that's going to put you off or bring more, but do try and bring a few along. If you, if you know anybody in the golf club, get them along. Um, I'm not going to speak a lot tonight, I don't feel like it. So <laughs> we're, we're going to, I, I want to introduce Mr Fred Hobbs from Prostatin who some of you might know. I'm sorry, Barry, I'm standing right in front of him. <laughs> okay, it's not crack yet, you're right. <laughs> I've done my part. I might have to be photographed. <laughs> yes, never mind, you've got a nice jumper on. <laughs> so welcome, welcome to you, and thank you very much for coming. Uh, he's. He's afraid that he, you might not be able to hear him, so if you can't, just put your hand up or give us a shout, and then we'll, we'll move forward somewhere. Okay? Well, All good over evening, to you everybody. Now. And, uh, can you hear me at the back? Yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, my name's Fred Hobbs, as the lady said. I'm 90 years old and I've lived in Prostatin all my life. I did have a business in Ridland up to 30 years ago. Uh, where Wilson's uh, are today, but I used to do motor body repairs in those days, and uh, that's going back a long time. But anyhow, <clears throat> tonight I'm going to call the, the, the talk, Thank You King George III, and uh, that's the, sub the main subject. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start with somebody that could support what the situation was at the time. In 1785, Thomas Pennant of uh, Downing Hall, which is about seven miles from here, but uh, at Whitford, and uh, unfortunately it burned down in the 20s. But uh, Thomas Pennant, a scientist, he wrote about uh, 20 books and was translated into about 42 languages. He was a prominent scientist of the time and studied the species the animals and how they arrived, but he didn't discuss humans because he was a devout Catholic and it wasn't a popular subject at the time and uh, he left it to Darwin 80 years later to uh, bring the subject forward. So uh, Thomas Pennant, because there were wars on the continent, he decided that uh, he would do a tour of North Wales. So he, he got a team together and uh, there was the, uh, he wasn't very good at Welsh, although he was proud to be a Welshman. And uh, uh, he got the vicar of Kerwis. I'm sorry I haven't got his name. But uh, he was a, a good Welsh speaker and uh, understood uh, the accents and so on. <coughs> and uh, he had uh, uh, Moses Griffiths the, uh, uh, to do the artwork and draw the places they visited because there was no photography in those days in the 1785 and uh, anyhow they set out uh, with the uh, ostler to look after the horses, a cook, two assistants for putting the tents up and uh, the vicar of uh, Kerwis and Mo Moses and himself and they went via Newmarket which is now Trelawney's and I think it was Trelawney's before, but it was uh, one of the local farmers that set a market up and changed the name. But, uh, that was one of the wins who had the Gop Farm at uh, Newmarket or Trelawney's, if you prefer. And uh, they went through Clanasa, Gwesper and down onto the uh, Gronant uh, um, salt marshes. 
and uh, they stretched in those days. There was no Tulacra and the, uh, so on. There was the Point of Air Lighthouse, but that was stuck on a prominence at the corner of the called the Point of Air, as we know. And uh, the <coughs> rabbits were very were lovely and tasty on the salt marshes in those days. And uh, he also noted that when the tide was out, people could talk across the River Dee to the, from Flintshire to the Wirral people. And then when the tide came in, which was ferocious, well, it is today, but, uh, and it came right up to the, where the coast road is today, on high tides. So uh, it was quite a coverage, and covered, as to say, with salt marshes, and there were no sand hills at all. And uh, anyhow, he set off, and he came to uh, Gronant, and then Prostatin, and he noted that there was a lot of uh, cereals grown at Prostatin between the boundary of Gronant, and uh, the uh, east of the River Cluid, which was 1,700 acres they got under cultivation. And of course it was exported eventually from Ridland to uh, Liverpool and Birkenhead, which were grown, growing cities, and uh, some went to Chester. And then he came on to R Ridland via Dizeth, and he did call at uh, uh, the hall, uh, <coughs> I've forgotten it. Madrid and Hall. But I, I'm not going into his uh, what he reported about them. Just to say that when he came to Ridden, he studied the castles, and uh, uh, he, he was uh, again. It was a subject of his task to be dealt with by itself. But uh, he couldn't <coughs> cross to Abergelly because of the marshes. And uh, the, uh, the, they were with horses and so on, they might get stuck and their legs go into the mud and that, all sorts of things. But the Ridland Marshes, they, if you all remember, in, well not quite remember, but you know of, in 796 there was the battle in there between the uh, King of Gwynedd and uh, King Offa of Mercia, because this side of the Cluid we were in a, a place called Englefield, and uh, this was part of the Saxon Empire or country of the day. And they came here about <coughs> 660 or something. Well, I leave it open the date, but it's somewhere around that date. And they stayed until, well, they were in charge until 1066. And we still have Saxon words we use and some French, as we know, and some Welsh, so, as it goes. So, uh, in, that was in 796. The King of Gwynedd got killed, and Offa died of his wounds some not very long after. Thomas uh, Pennant went on to St. Asaph and Denby, and uh, just mentioned the fact that uh, uh, the tide, the, the high tides used to come well inland, right up to Llandullus, which of course the, there's a prominence there where they have the quarries and uh, it was uh, uh, so you got the whole beach from virtually from Talacra today right through to Llandullus which was subjected to high tides and uh, in Prostatin for example well the high street ended just where Woolies was, or if you know today, Home Bargains. And uh, uh, that's where the tide came to. And that piece of land uh, ahead of it was called Cora Tries. And any Welsh people here will support me, I'm sure, when I say that's the surround of the beach. <coughs> and uh, that's how that was for generations and hundreds of years and uh, the same with the marsh and uh, the uh, River Elwy used to burst its banks on a regular basis and run down through Bottle Witham and down to the sea. So uh, uh, Rill didn't exist, not as we, I mean, as we know it. There were some farms with a few cottages for their employees, 
There was uh, Trash Llewellyn, uh, Bryn Conan, Quibber. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right, Quibber, Bryn and Bryn Hedges. Uh, they were a sort of a piece of land that were higher than the general and uh, they built farms and uh, they on these places. And then we had the French Revolution. Now what on earth the French Revolution got to do with this area? <coughs> so uh, we, uh, we had a drought in this country, we had a drought for two years and uh, the crops were in a bad way. And we used to buy crops from uh, the Netherlands and the uh, Flemish country, North France, which uh, today is sort of Belgium and that area on the north coast of France. And uh, we were in the state of the Industrial Revolution and a lot of our farm labourers had gone to work in factories. I mean, there was the Hollywood uh, Greensfield Valley, there were three cotton mills there, there were there were copper manufacturing places as well and uh, import and export of uh, into the greenfield docks so uh, the, uh, <clears throat> a lot of the local people had moved out from the farms and uh, and also by coincidence in france in the middle of france they'd had a two-year drought there and uh, they were also short of cereals in particular and uh, somebody went up to uh, uh, what was Marian Ant uh, Antoinette is it? I can't quite remember the name and said that uh, they've got no bread. She said give them cake. Well, her head didn't last long after that. I don't think it was a guillotine. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the uh, situation was that uh, uh, Charles, um, George III and his government decided they must do something about making more food in this country and they said that all the uh, salt marshes must be drained and turned into arable land and they came this way and uh, the first thing they did they uh, banked the Elwe so that it ran out into the uh, Reed of the Idur the meeting of the two rivers and uh, uh, so that ended that problem of it running down into bottle with them and then they built sandbanks from uh, Prostatin I, anybody know Prostatin if from the, the uh, Pontins camp there was a great big sand hill there between just on this south side of Pontins where Pontins camp is and that went along to uh, a place called Grosvenor Road and uh, well, this is the first sand hills in Bristatin, not the present ones. And uh, the, uh, if you go down Grosvenor Road today you can see the sandbank that was built at the time in, uh, in uh, 1793 and there are bungalows on top of it uh, being built. And this sand hill went down uh, through through the remainder of Prostatin, the bottom of Melodon, because it was the, uh, uh, the Melodon went to the sea of its own rights in those days because <coughs> it was the parish and Prostatin was in the Melodon parish and so was Nant, uh, another little piece more uh, between Gronent and Prostatin and uh, uh, Melodon was more, a more important place at the time. And, uh, the desert had a piece of the beach, so it, this uh, sand hill went through there and then through uh, the uh, parish of Ridland because there was no rill at the time. And uh, that was in, uh, as I said, 1793. And uh, the uh, sand hill went on, we went to the Vorid and over then from Kimble Bay as we know it today and carried on to San Dulles. And uh, also at the time they were making cuts for, for water on the uh, inland side of the sand hills. And uh, these cuts were dug because we had 
plenty of people digging canals around Britain at the time and uh, the uh, navvies were able to come and dig the cuts. And they went to Abergelly and they diverted the river Gelly to the Cluid. The, the Gelly used to run out at Pensarn and Pensarn, uh, well so help me again, it's been the uh, top of the causeway. And uh, uh, so Pensarn had lost the, egg, egg, the estuary of the river and uh, as I say the river Gelly and its tributaries all went out into the Cluid, halfway between Rudland and the sea. They went to Pristatin and there was a stream running from Melodon, uh, Reed Farm, just below uh, Greigvaur and uh, that was uh, went down, threaded its way through the country making a, a valley and down through the meadows and uh, into the marsh and partially into the sea east of the Frith as we know it today. And uh, they diverted that into the Prostatin gutter. The gutter was a tidal uh, effect which was uh, fed by small streams. The one in particular was from the uh, um, <coughs> Nant Mill farm or the Nant Mill pond. Those that uh, know where it is, all the, the wives used to take their babies there to feed the ducks and they still do. But uh, that, uh, that was the main source of the gutter from inland. But it was tidal and it didn't go out in Gronans as it is today. It went out between Barkby Hotel, uh, the um, uh, Beaches Hotel and Grond. And uh, boats were uh, that came in by creating this uh, diversion of the uh, stream. We are now created a dock in uh, uh, what we call Barkby Avenue today, and uh, ships, not only small ones, 60 ton, 70 ton laden weight, and uh, they used to come in to the dock at Prostatin because uh, by Having the dock there, people had invested and we had a sulfuric acid or vitriol factory and we also had an alkali factory down there for making soap. But uh, due to the uh, acids that came off it, they were discontinued by an Act of Parliament in 1863. Because uh, they were dangerous, they were, the, uh, they were killing the uh, things in the land around and the chimney in the alkali works or soap works was 285 feet high to try and disperse it away from the district but it didn't help it uh, had to come down but anyhow uh, <coughs> the, that, so we've got the cut leading from the Prostatin from the Prostatin to the Melodin stream into the uh, Prostatin gutter and also, there's a sluice. If you go down Harlech Avenue in Prostatin and uh, to the end, you can see the sluice that fed the, or feeds the rill cut. And uh, this cut runs from there, uh, and it's fed also by the stream from uh, Aberkinsey Farm, and it runs through Rill and under Bryn, Brynheddith Road. Uh, the, uh, past the past uh, what used to be the county school or now it's uh, like our secondary bottom is it today? High school. Yeah. High, school. High, school. High, school. High school. High school. And then on the Vale Road, Kingsley Avenue and into the Cluid, almost opposite where the uh, River Gelly joins the Cluid. And uh, that was the uh, <coughs> A great improvement and it's also real <coughs> when the high tides came in the tide uh, used to wash up and uh, feed the marshes on uh, uh, where uh, Morrison's is today and uh, 
uh, Vale Road. Vale, is it Vale Road? That's right. Yeah. <coughs> and the uh, area of High Street at, uh, by the station. And it went, uh, and uh, it hurts me to see it because I, went, I was down Kingsley Road not long ago uh, and uh, it was full of television sets and uh, prams and bicycles but they have cleared it now, they, they have done that because it's so important that uh, cut to the drainage of the centre of Rill. It still works and still works as a drainage as these people had laid down in 1793. And uh, the uh, what else have I got down? Prostatin Oh well, these, the sand hills have almost disappeared, the original sand hills in Prostatin. But the people had started building hotels in, the, in uh, Rill on the new huge sand hills that were built. And then uh, uh, <coughs> the uh, people used to come and stay. There was a, a stagecoach from Chester to Rill. used to come via Denby, Rithin and Denby, and I think it was uh, three times a week. And they used to bring people down because uh, with the Hanovians uh, were all keen on uh, sea bathing and uh, George IV built uh, the uh, pavilion at Brighton and they were all keen on sea bathing at the time. And uh, Eventually, we in Prostatin, we had a, a man came along, his name was Mr. Poaching, and he'd bought uh, uh, <coughs> the uh, hall at Aberconway, Bedrithen, Bodnance rather, Bodnant Hall, and he lived there with his uh, wife, and he, he wanted somewhere, he'd been to Sandidno and bought a house, and still there, and the garden is run by the uh, local authority. But uh, he wanted a place where he could jump up in the morning out of bed and go and have a bathe. <laughs> so uh, he built another set of sand hills, from uh, virtually from Grons to halfway to the, nearly to the Freeth, and another company took on the same thing and built those, <coughs> continued the sand hills from there to Splash Point. Well he built a house on the, on the sand hills that uh, we as kids we used to think it was a haunted house because it was all empty and we used to have freedom to run in and out but eventually it was knocked down as unsafe. But uh, Mr Poaching had bought all the land around Prostatin. The farmers were at the time in about the 1880s were on their uppers because they couldn't compete with the, the uh, cost of the cereals coming from the America and uh, if you can remember in Oklahoma they said the whole corn was as high as an elephant's eye and still growing so uh, that was the situation. We couldn't compete. It was dry corn and very good coming from the States. And uh, anyhow to carry on further where were we? Pardon me. The uh, <coughs> yeah, we uh, Mr. Poaching gave Prostatin the gas works. It was a bit later. In the meantime, Rill had developed. They they got some a group of uh, builders together in Rill because uh, with the uh, building of the uh, cut. <laughs> It had drained the, the area around Vale Road and that area and people started to build and Vale Road went right up to the uh, sea front and then of course it was split up when the trains came and times moved on and they've changed the name to High Street and Vale Road has retreated but uh, it, uh, the, by doing this they all this they gave us extra land and uh, 
uh, I was thinking it's a very nice piece of land, you know, that, that uh, George and his George the Third and his group made for us in that effect. The uh, in uh, Mr. Pochin back in Pristatin, as I say, he bought all the farms around, and uh, he uh, also built the uh, first golf course called Golf House, and he gave us gas, and uh, uh, because he wanted uh, the lighting in his new house on the on the on the, on the sand hills, and he wanted water, and he ran a three-inch pipe from Dizzeth right through the town and that was the people that had been living on well water they now had nice clean water from the Marion Mills with a three inch pipe that it went right down to his house but there were stand pipes right through Melodon and Prostatin for people to draw water. Well Rillard started getting together a bit before this and uh, about uh, uh, <coughs> 1840-ish, uh, uh, there was a committee formed and uh, this committee got permission from Parliament to uh, build and develop Rill as they wished <coughs> and uh, they made a good job of it but it's fallen to pieces just lately I think. But uh, uh, that's about really all I've got to say folks, it's only a short talk but uh, <coughs> if there are any questions I would be to answer. Where did the water come to Ludlam? Was that from Marion Mills as well? Or uh, no, I, I don't know. No idea. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I haven't come to talk about Ridland mm -hmm. because I'm sure you must have had loads of talks about the castles mm -hmm. and the various mm -hmm. Gwindy Street or what have you, and mm -hmm. so on. So I, I have avoided that and I haven't swatted up as Ridland as such. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's very, very interesting indeed. There were several points that have been cleared up in my mind. Um, you start off with Thomas Pennant. Thomas Pennant. Uh, what happened to him? He must have had a, a big influence on uh, on you know, Rid Rid Riddle and Air. Uh, well, uh, he, he, uh, he was a very wealthy man. He had coal mines and uh, lead mines and a lot of property and uh, he was a descendant of the last abbot uh, of uh, uh, the uh, abbey in the Greenfield Valley, Basinwork, and uh, uh, when Henry uh, decided to dispense with them, he didn't pull them to pieces, it was the locals that pulled them to pieces to get the lead out of the roof and they're still doing it. So <laughs> <laughs> tacit as well, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, that's how, uh, and he he got a, a, a great big piece of land as a sort of present for reward from from the royal family, whoever he was at the time, and uh, they were they called themselves Pennant because a Pennant, because that was the name of the stream that ran through Bichtum, where the where the village where they lived, and. Uh, uh, any more questions? Now? Where was Mr. Pochin's house then in Prestatin? Uh, he lived in the Victoria, in the Nant Hall Hotel. Ah, he, right. he, and then he converted it into a hotel. Uh, but uh, he, he lived also in the golf house. And then, uh, first of all, he built the golf house, and uh, um, and then the he was as a house, not as a golf house because the golf house was a, w a wooden shed further in inland a bit uh, before you got to the, gut to the gutter and the cut. Mm. And, uh, and then uh, when he left, they uh, turned it into a golf, the golf, or the, as we call it today, uh, the beach, uh, beaches hotel. But uh, that's because he involved a lot of uh, extensions uh, after he left. So, but uh, uh, he uh, had a daughter, who uh, <coughs> a Mrs. McLaren, who was married to uh, Sir Charles uh, McLaren. He was an MP, and uh, uh, 
when Lloyd George was uh, dishing out uh, lordships, he uh, coughed up, and uh, in 1911 he got his he was made a lord, Lord Abercrombie, and uh, Mr. Pochin was the father-in-law to Lord Abercrombie, and Mr. Pochin is one of the, is a member of the Pochin family of Middlewich, and uh, I rang them up one day and asked if I could speak to the eldest poaching and they said uh, well he isn't available at the moment give me a telephone number so I uh, and he rang me at seven o'clock at night and uh, was uh, giving me uh, all sorts of information and so uh, I said uh, you're very uh, well informed of the family he said I'm reading it from a book <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I said, well, what's the book called? He said, uh, the, uh, the Road to Bodment. Ah. And, uh, so, uh, the local library hadn't got one. There's one in Colwyn Bay and there's one in Connors Key, but there isn't one in Prestatin. You know, typical. But anyhow, I managed to, my son managed to get one from uh, A on Y. So, uh, it's a fascinating story of Mr. Pochin, how he uh, went as a young chemist from the farm and how he became an industrial chemist and then uh, he uh, invested in steel and iron works and coal mines and what have you and eventually he bought the English China Clay Company and uh, what he didn't make China out of it what he did with the clay it was to make uh, polished magazines like you know, these. Yeah. He inserted, mixed it with the, the paper before he <coughs> and, uh, made the, And the first one, I think, was the uh, London uh, Illustrated. Illustrated. Illustrated News. Mm. It was about the first polished magazine we had. And of course, right around the world. They've got polished magazines everywhere. But most of the stuff now comes from Brazil. Uh, most of the clay that makes the polished paper. But uh, Mr. Pochin was, well, the Abercrombies are tremendously wealthy. They're, they've got businesses in every country, just about uh, right around the world, you know. Sort of uh, fly from one to the other. <laughs> house to the other. And, Anybody, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Fred. Sorry. I'm sorry I'm interrupting, I thought you'd finish saying. <laughs> uh, well, are there any more questions? Yes, Chris. Fred, oh, no, sorry, go oh, on. Well, isn't there a printed book, Penance Travels or something, which I recall? Oh, yes. Across yeah, there is, there's a, I've got a copy of the um, North Wales tour. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's a terrible book to read because it's in French, in Latin, and all the S's are F's. You know, it's the uh, most difficult book to read. And some, Welsh as well. <laughs> and some Welsh as well, I believe. Oh, yes, there's a bit of Welsh in it, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, uh, you know, you, it's very difficult. I sometimes write it out as I'm to read it in. My language, <laughs> it goes. Yeah, but uh, Thomas Pennant uh, was a, a brilliant scientist of his day, and uh, amazing. Success Chris, you want to ask? Uh, yes, please. Could you tell us um, a little more about the docks in Prastatin, please? Oh, uh, you know what sort of period it was operating? Well, when I was a lad. There was a, the skeleton of a ship, you know, just the uh, the ribs, as it were, and uh, it was about uh, it was about twenty foot long, perhaps a bit more, and uh, that year they used to come into the dock there, and uh, they exported uh, limestone from the quarries and lime mortar, which uh, there were a lot of kilns in Prestatin and Melliden. I think there were seven or eight in Prestatin and eleven in Melodon and they all used to supply, uh, send this off to developing cities of Liverpool, Birkenhead and uh, Chester and uh, there were farm products as well and then the imports would be uh, 
uh, soap was made with uh, uh, f animal fats and uh, uh, also burnt vegetation. And uh, the west, the west coast of Scotland, uh, I think you may have seen it on a coast, how they, the whole length of the west coast of Scotland was fully employed making, cutting uh, uh, sea plants, uh, just uh, all sorts of plants. And in fact there was so much prostatin and when I was, a, I was about ten and uh, we were going along the beach with one of my mates and he had a ruler and we, there was one of these pieces of uh, seaweed as it were or whatever you call it, sea plants, and it was 30 foot long and it was about that wide and it had the, the middle stem down one side. Now we don't see any of that anymore because the sea is so contaminated that they won't grow anymore, you know. But uh, I'm going back 80 years now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But uh, uh, that's how they, they burnt the uh, seaweed and uh, the white ash you get when you burn vegetation is uh, soda ash and uh, that was what they used, the soda, uh, to uh, uh, mix with the uh, fats which made soap and uh, you, uh, the uh, some of the plants were, came from Spain uh, and uh, you got uh, somebody named it Knights Castile, and suddenly the Spaniards uh, decided uh, that they wouldn't export it anymore and uh, hoping that uh, Europe would more or less collapse, but uh, somebody found a way of making soda, uh, soda, the sodium of salt by roasting the salt, and that's what they used to do in Prostatin, was roast the salt, it, uh, it may have been from the sea, because they had drying pans everywhere, and some of it would have come from Cheshire, and uh, they roasted the salt, and the uh, the chlor sodium chloride, isn't it? And uh, the chloride would uh, evaporate through the chimneys, which was very destructive because it was hydrochloric acid that they were pushing up. And uh, the, uh, so the sodium was kept then to mix with the, the fats to make soap. And uh, as I said in 1863, it uh, became illegal. But just at that, that, that time, somebody found in Greenland sodium that was uh, attached to some of the material which wasn't poisonous. But by then it was too late for the prostatin uh, works. But uh, Lever Brothers and Crossfields and those sort of big people uh, were able to exploit this new uh, method. Can I just uh, add, a, add a little to that? Um, Mr. Pochin uh, was full of good ideas, and since he had an involvement with China clay, he decided to add that to the soap, the uh, best refined soap, and that made us, it possible to have toilet soap as opposed to household soap. So all our lovely complexions are down to Mr. Pochin. Thank you very much. But he sold the idea to the um, uh, Lord Leverhulme and that yes. gang who put up Port yes. Sunlight. Yeah. So he, he didn't actually do it himself, but he had the original idea. Yeah. Well, yeah. You did mention where the factories were, the sort of factories, but I, I didn't understand. Oh, well, I, I see. didn't hear it. Well, you know, that's, me, um, that's not you. you. Marine Road. Yes. You go, and you don't go over Bondon Bridge, you go straight on, yes. uh, off Marine Road in Prostatic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go over the bridge. No. no. Straight on, and uh, there were the uh, uh, vitriol works was down there uh, on the on the left, that's, and that's, that's where the um, 
quick save was. Yeah, quick quick save. 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 Oh no! no. no. Fear no. the down. That's right. Yes, I beg your pardon. Yeah. The warehouses. Yes. 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 That's right. Yes. Down there. Yes. That's what the but on the other side of the road, on the between the gutter and the road, yeah. was this factory. Not it far was, from the golf club then. Pardon? Not far from the golf courses now. No, that's right. Yes. <laughs> now that land is <coughs> forbidden to be built on because of the acids and so on. And all horses have lived on it for years. Yeah. <laughs> but they won't let humans. So the factories were there then, were they? The factory was down there? Yes. <coughs> the Vitzel factory. Yeah. Yeah. Anything uh, left there still? No, uh, nothing. Not, nothing. I, there was, when I was a kid there was a shed there. Yeah. It was, uh, the actual plant was, of, uh, was 30 foot high, about 20 foot wide and 60 foot long. Yes. And uh, uh, they used to bring uh, uh, the uh, stone from up the Conway Valley, uh, uh, fool's, fool's Gold. Oh yeah, uh, Iron yeah. Mm. Iron Palaces. That's right. And uh, they used to put that in the uh, oven and heat it and the uh, uh, parieties would uh, 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 rise off it, yeah. the sulphur. So on, and uh, and the, the iron was left behind, mm -hmm. but the uh, sulphur went into make the sulfuric acid. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, it was a, a, a complicated process which I uh, deny to I'm going into it. This <laughs> 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 day, but uh, that's what. Uh, that's what they used to do. And that's the, where the factory was. Yeah. And that, that came from, as I say, up the Conway Valley. Yeah. But uh, eventually they found it was cheaper to get it from Sicily because yeah. the, it was easier to mine. And, uh, so but how far away was that from the port then? From the port? Yeah. Well, it was only just, uh, just the width of it's about 100 feet, 200, yeah. no, 150 yeah. feet. But the hotel is now more or less. But the yeah. hotel, or the Hall Hotel, yeah. well, that's over the bridge, yeah. and along the, the road. Bridge. It's the other side no, of the the beaches he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about this beach hotel. You're talking about the beach hotel. Yeah. Oh yes, that's right. Yes, yeah. that, but that's by the new sand hills. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's about a quarter of a mile mm -hmm. further down. down. Yeah. Oh yeah. You got it straight now, but I, yeah, well, I, <laughs> I can visualise the place. I just yeah. want to. Yeah. And the soap works was. Where Bodnan Bridge was, yeah. where it comes down over the line, that's where the soap works was. Mm. Right oh. there, they would, the bridge was built where the soap works was. And, uh, and, uh, Are there photographs of these uh, factories? No, it, uh, no. it was uh, 1863. Yeah. They, were, they were closed. Well, I mean, in those days, uh, Photography was, a, although there was, there was, there was, it might have been photography, or it had just been well, invented. Well, people in the studio. Yes. Yeah. 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 Slow process. Yeah. Fred, if you come down Bodnam Bridge towards going north, yeah. there's a, a, quite an old cottage down on the right hand side, sort of quite closer to the railway than the newer properties. Yes, yeah. it used to be um, the office. Well, I was once told that was one of the oldest houses in Prestatin. Probably, yeah. Mm. Uh, still up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said it was the office for the office. The office yes, for the soap works. For the soap works. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'll go and tell him then. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to talk to me. Oh. <laughs> Anything else? Are you quite happy? Well, I really want to thank you very much. Oh. Um, I thought we'd have a bit of history, yeah. but we've had history and geography and science and <laughs> all sorts of things, <laughs> and all just chatted away there with the, with some notes. Yeah, yeah, I think it deserves you. a real good round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, the ladies will make us our cup of tea now. And, uh,